Good morning, Professor S. Mark and Professor Lawrence and Good morning. Professor Wang Gan. So, Xiao, you have been president for the committee for the selection of uh, Nobel Prize uh, in Literature for 70 years. Fortunately, China has uh, a first uh, Nobel Prize winner in Literature, uh, Mr. Mo Yan. Um, Actually, if I may interrupt you, there would have been uh, another before that. Oh, yeah. Because in 1988, Shenzhen Wen, when you say, he was very close to uh, getting the prize. Yeah. But unfortunately, he died that year. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he would be the first mm. Chinese laureate. Mm. Literature is a uh, sort of a word thing, and the selection is uh, perhaps difficult. In translation, uh, there are two approaches mainly. Uh, one is domestication, another is foreignization. But uh, in foreignization, you see, uh, the readers will find it difficult to read the translated uh, works. But in domestication, uh, much of the original flavor will be lost. So I was wondering whether the, the judges, in the process of your selection, which do you prefer? Well, actually, uh, I think many, peop many people think that a work must be translated into Swedish to come into question. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm. In the academy, we read many languages. Mm. The European languages, of course, including uh, Italian, Spanish, Russian. Mm -hmm. But also there is an, one of the leading experts on Chinese literature in the world, uh, Joran Malmqvist, is a member of the uh, academy. But um, also, if there are no translations into, for instance, English, French, German, mm -hmm. we can order translations of our own. In many cases, there have been translations in only 18 copies, mm -hmm. one each for the, eight, for the 18 members of the Academy. Mm -hmm. um, references to other literature, mm -hmm. references to cultural conditions, geographic conditions, mm -hmm. They must also be um, included in the process. And we can have the, the help of experts uh, on the various literatures to help us to get all the domestic references mm. to understand that. In the selection, uh, the judges mu must have some standard for the quality of the work mm -hmm. in order that they recommend it to win the, the, the prize. So what kind of uh, standard by which the judges use to judge the quality? Uh, the standards are in uh, Nobel's will and t testament of will. Mm. Uh, because he said in a rather vague way that he wanted uh, the prizes, all the prizes all the also in, uh, in, in the sciences, mm -hmm to be for the benefit of mankind mm -hmm. and for the literary prize a specific criterion was that it should be in the ideal direction ideal and what direction. is ideal direction and you could say that in the various phases the various chapters of, of the history of the prize mm. there have been different interpretations of this, his will mm. So the criteria change with the times. Yes, mm. the, because they are all interpretations of the will. Yeah. And each new generation of the academy has its new interpretation of Nobel's will. The Yale professor, uh, Harold Bloom, says uh, aestheticism is the only standard. Th mm -hmm. That's what he said. And yes, he says, it is. Yeah. It's literary value. Yeah, so literary value. Because so. politics is kept away from for the prize. Mm -hmm. you, it never, you could see, as to politics, there you must make a distinction mm. between political intention mm. and po political consequences. Mm -hmm. An international prize naturally mm. can have political consequences, mm -hmm. but there must never be a political intention. Mm -hmm. That's understandable, and that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was also wondering, um, you see, uh, before Mo Yan won the Nobel Prize, um, actually, uh, among the Chinese writers, we have many outstanding 
writers. We have many others. Yes. But they did not co perhaps come to the list. Uh, they did not show on the list. I was wondering whether it's a, it's a problem of language, translation, or otherwise. Well, I can tell you that the first can Chinese ca candidate to be discussed was Lu Jun. Lu Xun. And even uh, uh, there was some scouting. Uh, some uh, one came to him and asked him if he w would accept a Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. And Lu Chun answered, no, I'm not worthy of the prize. Uh -huh. And for the time being, there is no Chinese writer deserving the prize. And he was wrong, of course. He was too modest. Uh -huh. But that was in 1936. Mm -hmm. And he died that year, as you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, the discussion stopped there. Mm -hmm. But I think Lu Chun would have been a worthy recipient of the prize at that time. Mm -hmm. But so the problem was that there were no proposals coming from the East. There were no Chinese proposals. There must be proposal, you see. You see? They must be suggested. Uh, who? Let me tell you how it's done. Yeah. Uh, all over the world, all writers, all academies, all writers' unions, all pen clubs, all professors in, in literature and language have the right to send in proposals to the academy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if an outstanding writer mm. is not proposed from the outside, mm. the Nobel Committee will come in and supplement them. So the final list of 200, from 200 mm. writers, mm. should contain all the good writers of the world. Mm, mm, mm. And I should, uh, 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 I should g advise the the professors in, in uh, uh, literature and language mm -hmm. in China to send in their proposals to the academy. Mm -hmm. You need no invitation for that. Mm. You could just send to the, the Swedish Academy, Stockholm. Uh, Swedish Academy of... Uh, yeah, uh, send in your proposal. <laughs> Stockholm. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Professor Wang Kan may <laughs> do that <laughs> in the future. <laughs> You're welcome. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, you have visited China for quite a number of times. Um, for Xiao, it's nine times. For nine Monica, times, yeah. perhaps it's the eight. same. Eight. Yeah. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps you are also um, interested in some of the uh, contemporary writers. Some of them are known to you? Yes, I can tell you. <coughs> the first time I was in China, yeah. in 1982, yeah. I met Ai Ching, Ding Ai Ding, Ching. Mm -hmm. and um, uh, Wang Meng, and yeah, many Wang others. Wang. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, a meeting with uh, Ba Jin mm -hmm. in Shanghai, mm -hmm. which was uh, televised. Mm -hmm. We had a talk for an hour mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So uh, I knew these writers very well. I read uh, their works. Mm -hmm. But I must say that there's been a, a fantastic evolution in mm -hmm. Chinese literature since then. Mm -hmm. It's uh, really a, a blooming of literature mm -hmm. in, in recent years. Yeah. I would like to add that there is a translator who is also our guide in, in China, mm -hmm. Chen Maiping, mm. who has now, he lives in Sweden and he now has a publishing company. Oh, yeah. And he brings out a number of Chinese works. Mm. Uh, yeah. So he's quite doing a very important work. Well, I know him, but yet I know uh, him personally. Several of the writers today, like Ya Ping Wa, Yan Yan Ke, uh, yeah. and uh, oh. Bu Yan, of course, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Liu Shen Yun. Mm. So lots of uh, writers uh, have been known to the academy members. Of course. <laughs> so of course. So and the Swedish public. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Swedish yeah. public. Yes. Uh, uh, that's very good. <laughs> uh, writers' thoughts and the character thoughts sometimes merge together. Uh, that is why sometimes literary creation seems to be sort of uh, autobiography of the, of the author. Um, take Hong Lo Meng, uh, Dreams of, of the Rare Mansion, for example. Uh, Hong Lo Meng, the book, seemed to present the author's feelings, emotions, and family life, and uh, the, the, the society in which he, he lived, too. Hong Lo Meng, yeah. 
古文性的研究，发现这个呃小说的人物跟作家的身世有很大的关系。呃，最有意思的，刚才这个今天我们的话题里面讨论这个女性文学，这《红楼梦》呢，他这个现在认为曹雪芹呢，他是一个男性的作家，但是这个《红楼梦》整个小说的叙事有很多篇幅啊，他都用这种女性的视角，特别像女性作家写的，所以很多人也也因此这个怀疑这个《红楼梦》这个小说里面这个作者，哎，是不是另外另有其人 ？This goes. Into a discussion that we have in Sweden at the moment, which is identity um, identity discussion, which claims that if you are a black person, you cannot write about a white person, a white person cannot write about a black person, a man can absolutely not write about a woman, a trans person, homosexual example, must write about that and nothing else. I mean, they. Though the people who discuss it this way, they um, don't acknowledge the vision, the imagination of the creative writer. I think that the book you mentioned could very well be written by a man with a very sensitive feeling for women. So, what do you think that literature is sometimes a kind of reflection? Of the author's life, I mean, the work is not affected by the author's life. He he writes objectively. Well, that's nonsense, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I like <Because> it. <laughs> <laughs> if this book is about somebody else's mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. uh, another a different woman, mm. of course, the way that I have chosen the material, handled the material, the way I comment on the material yeah. is, of course, my mm -hmm. comes from my experience. Mm. But if you go to Chell. Uh, when you write, uh, sort of, this book, for example, uh -huh. about Hoffman, the Hoffman, uh, Hoffman's uh -huh. defense, uh -huh. it's uh, about a, a German writer, mm. Mm. and he's lying on his deathbed, mm. and he's dictating to a scribe mm. uh, his situation, mm -hmm. and the scribe happens to be me, mm. and uh, he is in a very difficult position because he's a judge. Is a writer, mm -hmm. and in these uh, capacities, he's insulted the government in mm -hmm. both ways mm -hmm. because he he wants proof and law mm -hmm. to judge, mm -hmm. and they want him to to get out of the, after the terrorists because mm -hmm. they had terrorists at time too. Oh, okay. And anyway, so this is a sort of of uh, biography, but in the form of a novel, mm -hmm. actually, and uh, I think I have the same. Um, duties as my wife, mm. because we want to respect facts. Yeah. I cannot, as a novelist, change the reality that was there in the year 1822. Mm. 